Let's take a look at some of the highest selling manga of all time that were discontinued in English. Stay tuned. From the earliest years of manga being published in English, it was not entirely uncommon for us to see series be discontinued. Now, it's not so common now with how big the manga industry is and sales being as high as they have been for the last several years, it's not often that we see something released and not completed in English. However, over the past several decades, Many manga have been discontinued before they ended in their English publication, and many of those are some of the highest selling of all time. Now, somewhat recently, I put together a video where I talked about the highest selling manga of all time that have never been printed in English before, and this video is a follow-up to that one. If you haven't seen that one, I'll give a link on the screen and a link down below so that you can go check it out, but you can enjoy this one nonetheless, whether you watched it or not. And while we're here, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you like content like this, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell so you're notified whenever I put out more content. So as we move forth in this video, I'm going to be talking about these things in the order, each series is going to be listed in the order in which, you know, they were on the highest sellers list. So I'm going to be starting with the lowest of the highest sellers and going all the way up to one of the highest selling series of all time, which happens to have been discontinued in English. And along that, I will be mentioning as well the number that it has as far as the highest selling of all time. So the first one I'll be mentioning is the 172nd highest of all time, and I'll be going forward like that. Now, originally I did plan on also adding in manga that had, uh, you know, prequels, sequels, spin-offs, etc. that have never been published in English, uh, but that made this video really, really long, and so I decided to cut all of that for time, but I will be mentioning one series because I did mention it in the previous video, and it's one that I think is pretty noteworthy. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into the list, starting with number 172 on the list of highest selling manga of all time, and that is Weed. Now, weed itself, or in Japan, it's known as Ginga Densetsu weed, or uh, Silver Fang Legend weed, is actually a sequel. The original series was called uh, Silver Fang the Shooting Star Gin, and it was following a dog on his adventures. Now, this series is actually following the son of the protagonist from the original, and his name is Weed. And basically, the series follows Weed as he searches for his father in the O Mountains. Uh, but along the way, he winds up, you know, helping people out and stuff. Now, this series ran for uh, 60 volumes, or more than 60 volumes, and actually had a few spin offs and stuff as well. But in English, the publisher Comics One, who is defunct, has been defunct for decades now, um, was only able to publish the first three volumes. Now, you're going to be hearing the names of a lot of publishers on this list that no longer exist, and that's usually the reason why these titles were discontinued, is because the publisher that was working on them ceased to exist, and the license just hasn't been picked up anywhere. Now, the license for the original series does belong to Manga Planet, but they only publish digital manga, um, but as far as I could find, Weed has not been picked up. Moving along, we get to number 169 on the highest selling list, and that is Swan, published by CMX. Now, CMX was actually a division of DC Comics that published manga, but that division went defunct as well after a while. And Swan was one of their bigger titles. It was one that had more volumes published, and they actually published 15 out of the total 21 volumes of this shoujo manga. Now, the manga itself follows the main character, who is a young girl named Masumi, and she's trying to become a ballerina. Unfortunately, CMX was not able to publish the entire series before the imprint was closed, and fans of the series are left without those final six volumes available in English. Next up, we move ahead uh, quite a bit to number 138 on the list, and that is Zatch Bell. Now, Zatch Bell is probably going to be one that's more familiar to people, as the franchise itself was really big and pretty successful back during the mid-2000s in English. Um, the anime was airing on Toonami, we had uh, toys and stuff, we had video games, a lot of things spun out of the Zatch Bell franchise in English. However, when Viz Media was publishing the manga, they were only able to publish 25 out of 33 volumes. But this is kind of an interesting story, and I wasn't able to find uh, absolute confirmation of this, but given the year that these things happened, it seems like the series license was 
taken from Viz because of some litigations and court issues that were happening uh, with the Japanese license holder Shogakukan, where the creator of the series, Makoto Raiku, had actually uh, pursued them in court because of mishandling of some of the original artwork of the series. In Japan, when a series has completed, typically the publisher will hand over all of the original artwork to the artist. And in this case, there were, I believe, five pieces missing. And so Raikou took Shogakukan to court about this, and since then he pulled the license and he has not worked with the publisher again. This stuff happened around the same time that Volume 25 was published in English, so suffice to say, I think it lines up to where the license was suspended from Shogakukan, and that led towards it also being suspended in the US with Viz. Unfortunately, those last eight volumes have never been published in English. However, in Japan, uh, Raikou has recently started publishing digitally a sequel to the original series. So if there's ever been a time where the series should be coming back, I would say now would be appropriate, um, but it wouldn't be likely to go to Viz. It'd be more likely that another publisher such as Kodansha would wind up picking the series up. Moving ahead pretty far again, we get to number 126 on the list, and that is Sayuki. Now, Sayuki is a rather well-known manga. It's based off of the classic uh, Chinese literary piece called The Journey to the West, and the original manga is actually fully published in English. Uh, it was fully published by Tokyo Pop, but then also re-released more recently by Kodansha. However, the first of the sequels, Sayuki Reload, was never fully released in English by Tokyo Pop. Out of its total 10 volumes, only the first eight volumes of Reload were ever published by Tokyo Pop. And around this time was when a lot of Tokyo Pop titles uh, kind of stopped being published. And this was because Kodansha in Japan had kind of just pulled all of their licenses from Tokyo Pop. And unfortunately for Tokyo Pop as a publisher, that meant that the vast majority of their catalog was all of a sudden gone. While a lot of series were concluded at other publishers, such as uh, Shonan Junai Gumi or GTO The Early Years, uh, Rave Master, Samurai Deeper Kyo, many titles such as Sayuki were dropped and not picked up anywhere else. Now, Kodansha does have the license to the franchise right now, but they have not announced anything about publishing any of the sequels or prequels or spin-offs to Sayuki uh, in the same format that they did those hardcovers just a couple of years ago for the original series. Now moving forward, I don't know if this one is actually discontinued, so I'll talk about it real quick, and that's number 115 on the list of highest selling of all time, and that is Boys B. This shonen romance series was published in English by uh, Tokyo Pop. Now in Japan, the original series had, I believe, 20 total volumes, but the Tokyo Pop edition there is not 20 as far as I know. It may have been discontinued and not completed its entire run. Um, I wasn't able to find any verification of that info, or Tokyo Pop may have just published thicker volumes that contain the original series in a smaller number of volumes. Either one of those things could happen, but at the very least I can say that Tokyo Pop only published the second of four series. The first series had 32 volumes, and they did not publish a single volume of that one. So the next one's a bit interesting for a number of reasons, um, and you'll be able to tell as soon as I say the name. Number 105 on the list of highest selling manga of all time is Futari Echi. Now, Futari Echi, as the name suggests, is um, that kind of manga, but it was one that was meant to be more educational. Um, it, it is telling the story of a newlywed couple and their romantic and sexual exploits, basically. Um, and it was supposed to be a, an informational book telling people about, you know, how to do certain things. Um, now this was brought over to America by Tokyo Pop, and they were going to be publishing the series. Now the, the plan originally was to publish five two-in-one volumes, and they used the name Manga Sutra for this. Um, they would publish those five two-in-one volumes, and then that was it. That's As far as I know, that's all the license was for in the US. And that's five two-in-one, so the first ten volumes out of 80 plus volumes that it had in Japan. Um, but that five volume plan got cut short because so many retailers had said that they were not interested in carrying Manga Sutra because of the explicit nature of the content. 
So they cut the series after four of those two-in-one volumes, never publishing that last planned volume. Uh, part of this was because of the fact that the, these were very expensive for Tokyo Pop to produce. That's what they said, at least, when they decided to cut publication after four volumes. And if you look up the volumes, they, you know, they're thicker volumes, they come with slipcases, each individually has a slipcase. So yeah, it makes sense the production value of these was going to be high, and if a lot of major retailers were deciding that they were not going to be carrying it, I, I tend to see how it makes sense for them to not want to continue this. If they did, I don't know if they would have gone past those first five volumes or not, but either way, this is an interesting listing in this video. Moving along, this is one of my favorite series that's on this list. That's number 99, and that is Reborn. Now, known in Japan as Katekyo Hitman Reborn, Viz Media published this series under their Shonen Jump Advance line, and from the get-go, this was one of my favorite titles that was being published back in the early to mid-2000s. Unfortunately, the series was cut short with them only publishing the first 16 volumes. The series was still ongoing in Japan at the time, but it would end with 42 total, so we didn't even get the first half of Reborn published in English. The series was just a really fantastic blend of comedy and action, and had really original characters with very original abilities, and it stood out as something amongst all the other shonen manga that I was reading at the time. I'm constantly saddened by the fact that we don't have the complete series available in English, uh, and I hope that one day Viz might reconsider, because I do think they still hold the license. Um, if they don't, then maybe someone else could pick it up and publish the rest of it, but either way, I would love to see that one released in English, and it makes me sad every time I look at my shelf and see that we only have 16 out of 42 volumes. Next up is number 89 on the list, and that is Bastard. Now this one is also a Viz publication, and Viz Media published 19 total volumes of the series. Now in Japan, there are 27 total volumes of Bastard, but it has been on a very lengthy hiatus for 12 years after those 27 volumes were published. So the series has been, you know, had been discontinued with 19 volumes, has been on hiatus with 27 volumes, so either way, we're out of luck if you're a fan of Bastard. Um, however, there has been a recent announcement that there will be a new anime adaptation coming to Netflix later this year, and maybe that Netflix adaptation can spawn a little bit of interest in the series and cause either Viz Media or another publisher to decide to publish the series again. And fully, I say fully with, you know, air quotes because, of course, it is on hiatus, but either way, it'd be nicer to have those last eight volumes that were never published in English than to have none at all. That brings us forward to number 83 on the list, and that is 3x3 three three Eyes, or 3x3 three three Eyes, however you want to say it. Um, Dark Horse actually published eight volumes of this series. This was an earlier series that they were working on. Um, I believe it was published originally in single issues before the volumes came out. So they published eight volumes, which is a pretty decent amount, but it was out of 40, so they hit 20% of the entire series. Now, what's notable about uh, 3x3 three three Eyes is the fact that there's never been a, a real anime adaptation. It does have like a short OVA adaptation, but that only covers a small amount, I think even less than the amount that Dark Horse published in English. Uh, if there were a lengthier adaptation that would come out, I feel like it would, uh, it would cause some interest, and just like I was saying with Bastard, might cause some people to decide to pick up the license and publish the rest of it. Uh, the series did have a couple of shorter spin-offs and whatnot that are also unavailable in English, uh, and the story follows a character named Pai, who is a three-eyed mandala, uh, and her immortal companion Yakumo, as they try to find a way to make Pai into a human so that she can forget about her troubled past. Uh, so this one, I've, I've seen the volumes around for a while. I remember this series getting published in the past, um, actually going to like old comic shops. I've seen the volume sitting there, um, but it just, it always makes me depressed because I'm like, I don't know if there's a point in me grabbing those because there's only like 20% out of the entire series is available in English. Uh, moving forward, we get to number 82, which is Worst. Now, Worst was published in English by Digital Manga Publishing, and you might recognize that name because DMP has worked a lot with Dark Horse on series like Trigun uh, and Berserk, and I believe Helsing as well. But they do also publish a lot of stuff on their own, and they still publish stuff to this day. Now, the series in Japan had 33 total volumes, but in English we only got three. As well, this is by Hiroshi Takahashi, who's the same creator as the series Crows, which I mentioned in my previous video because it was one of the highest selling manga of all time that has not been released in 
in English at all. It's actually set in the same school as Crows, Suzeron High, uh, and it's also in the same universe as another of Takahashi's series called QP. Now, Digital Manga Publishing did mention in the past that if there was enough interest in this, that they would consider returning to publication and maybe put out the whole series, uh, but that was quite a while ago, so I don't know if that's still on the table for them. However, DMP is known to use Kickstarter as means to fund projects and stuff, so I'm just putting the thought out there uh, that maybe they could do the same for a series like this, uh, like Worst, and maybe continue and also publish Crows, who knows? The floor is yours, DMP. All right, moving forward is a pretty big one. And I think the only Jose manga that is on this list, and that is number 73 of the highest selling manga of all time, Nodame Cantabile. And I apologize if I mispronounced this. Now, Delray manga, who popped up as like basically before Kadansha comics existed in the US, there was Delray manga. And then Delray was like a collaboration between Penguin Random House, the uh, publisher and distributor, as well as with Kadansha Japan. And this was what they came up with was Delray manga. Uh, they published a lot of stuff, including, I believe, the last several volumes of Samurai Deeper Kyo, um, and a lot of their manga wound up moving over to Kadansha's catalog. This one, however, they published 16 out of the total 25, so only lacking nine volumes. Um, and then Delray went down and Kadansha Comics came up and they never published the last chunk of volumes in English. Kadansha does have the license uh, for the digital release, at least, um, and they do have it available through, you know, comiXology and whatnot. However, they haven't redone the physical release. They haven't mentioned wanting to publish it, but I, it's one of those that I feel like it's it's one of the most well-known Jose of all time. It's one of the most praised ones as well, as far as I'm aware. And it would make sense for them to actually decide to re-release this uh, in its entirety, but they're just sitting on that license. So I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, it is a romantic comedy focusing on a couple of students at the Momogaoka College of Music uh, who have very different personalities and play styles, but nonetheless, they engage into a relationship and the series kind of follows that. Uh, moving forward, we jump ahead to number 66 on this list. List, which is Super Radical Gag Family. Um, I had to throw this in there because the only thing I was able to find, the only specific information that I could find about this was that it was licensed in English by Studio Iron Cat. Studio Iron Cat was a smaller publisher that existed, I guess, in the early 2000s that I honestly had never heard of before I was putting this together. Um, I could not find any information that they actually published even a single volume of this. So I'm assuming that they licensed the series for publication in English and then were unable to publish it before the studio went under. Um, but it did get licensed, so that's why I have to mention it here. Now, the series in Japan had 31 total volumes, but there were several spin-offs and sequels, including Original Super Radical Gag Family with 28 volumes, Always Super Radical Gag Family with 24 volumes, and Apare Super Radical Gag Family, which is currently ongoing with at least six volumes from what I could find. This brings us around to another one that I own uh, in English, and that is Cobra. Cobra was published by Viz in these nice, uh, I don't know if there was collected volumes or not, but I have these nice uh, kind of square bound magazine format ones. Uh, each of these I think has one or two chapters of the original series. And it is a kind of a sci-fi space adventure series uh, following a character named Cobra, who at the beginning of the series is just this average office guy named uh, Johnson who goes to a place that allows him to make his dreams into a reality so he can experience his dreams as if they're real. And he dreams that he is the space adventurer called Cobra. Um, when he leaves this place and is going home, he gets into kind of an altercation where he meets someone and it's revealed to him that he actually is Cobra and that years ago he was being hunted by the pirate guild. And so to escape them and be able to live a more normal life, he had surgically altered his face and wiped his own memories. Now the Viz Media release was 12 of these issues, which covered the first couple of arcs, I guess, of the series, but they never continued forward from there. However, there is a full color, full release of the series digitally. Uh, as 15 digital volumes from a publisher called Creek and River. So if you search Creek and River Cobra, I guess, online, you can find their release and you can buy those uh, digital volumes, but that's the only way you're gonna get an official release of Cobra right now in English. 
All right, moving along to number 44 on the highest selling manga of all time list is City Hunter. Now, City Hunter is one, uh, the first one that I'm talking about here, actually, that was published in the US by a company called Gutsune Entertainment. And it, along with many others, was published as part of their Raijin Comics magazine. Raijin Comics was uh, originally weekly, but then moved to be a monthly magazine that published some more mature titles, including stuff like City Hunter and the Fist of the North Star uh, prequel series, Fist of the Blue Sky. Uh, and a lot of other different series. The magazine lasted for about 43, 44 issues or so before it was discontinued. Uh, basically, it couldn't keep up with the competition of uh, the Shonen Jump magazine, and the entire publisher went under, and unfortunately, like, all of their licenses were abandoned except for two. Uh, Slam Dunk, which was pretty quickly picked up by Viz, thankfully, uh, and then the second one was more recently picked up by Viz, and that is Fist of the North Star. Now, City Hunter was never picked up by a publisher, so as of now, we only have the first five volumes of the series, but the, the, the English volumes actually cover more than the first five Japanese volumes. They cover up to volume 11. Uh, and that's 11 out of the original 35 volume run. The series follows a sweeper named Ryo Saiba uh, who works to rid Tokyo of crime alongside his partner. And there's also a 33 volume spin off manga to this series titled Angel Heart that has also never been published in English. Due to the popularity of this series, from not just its manga across, you know, various parts of the world outside of the US where we don't have the entire thing, but also because of its the popularity of its anime adaptation and the many film adaptations, including uh, one that stars Jackie Chan, I feel like it would make sense for someone to pick up the license and publish this in its entirety in English, but we still haven't seen it, so fingers crossed that one day it actually happens. Next up is number 40 on the highest selling manga of all time list, and that is Initial D. And this is one that's going to sting for a lot of people, because Tokyo Pop, before the license was pulled by Kadansha, was able to publish 33 out of the total 48 volumes. So they made it quite a ways before it was unfortunately forced to be discontinued. Um, leaving the final 15 volumes never published physically in English. Now, years later, Kadansha digitally did license it, and you can read all of it digitally. The entire series is available now, but it still isn't available physically, and as of yet, as of now, in March of 2022, Kadansha has not announced any kind of plans to release a physical version of this book. Kadansha also has the license for a series that started in 2017, which is kind of a spin-off. Uh, not really spin-off, but it takes place in the same world as Initial D called MF. Uh, and that one's been ongoing since then, since 2017, and they do have digital releases of that as well, but no physical release for that one either. And I would love to see that one physically released as well, because I'm a huge fan of Initial D, and it really sucks because I was only able to get into it after the publication ended and after they lost the rights. So basically from when I started getting into Initial D, the physical copies, if I was trying to buy the physical copies on, on you know, eBay or something are stupidly priced. And they're even more stupidly priced now. So either way, I'm kind of, I'm kind of out of luck. Uh, so hopefully one day, fingers crossed, this one gets done because I would love to own it. And I would love to own it in its entirety in, in English. Moving forward, this is another one that stings for me, and that is Gintama. Now, Gintama was published by Viz Media, much like Reborn. It was published around the same time uh, under the Shonen Jump advanced line, and they made it through 23 total volumes of the series before it was discontinued. And I, I don't know for any particular reason outside of just, you know, sales maybe being low, but it was a series that I really enjoyed. In more recent years, the series has gained a ton of popularity and notoriety amongst anime watchers, specifically anime watchers who have watched the anime which is available uh, from English companies and stuff. It is officially available in the US, is what I'm trying to say. But the manga never completed publication. Now this one was still running in Japan while it was running in English as well, um, but by the time it ended it had 77 total volumes, which means we didn't even cover a third of the series in English. And so of course this is a very lengthy title and so it's going to be a tricky license for you know anyone to want to pick up. And I feel like that might be part of the reason why the English license has laid dormant for so long. But if a publisher, I assume Viz Media would give it another chance, I would love to see it happen. Whether they put it in singles, two in one volumes, or three in ones, however you can make it happen, please just make it happen. Now the next one on this list is not technically discontinued. Um, 
but only one part of the franchise was published in English, and I wouldn't talk about it on this video, but I did say that I would talk about it in the previous video I made, so I'll go ahead and mention it, and that is Kinnikuman, and the part that was published in English was published as Ultimate Muscle, or as it was known originally in Japan, Kinnikuman Nisei. Now, Kinnikuman is a very long-running intergalactic wrestling franchise, which follows the main characters of Kinnikuman and his son, etc. Um, and there are multiple parts of the series in Japan, however, only one part has been published, and published in its entirety, to be fair, in English. However, the original series and the spin-off series for Ramen Man, the two uh, sequel spin-off type series for the second series, and the Lady Kinnikuman series, none of those have been published in English. So, we only have a small yet complete sample of the entire franchise. Um, like I said, I wouldn't mention it because I'm not mentioning all the other titles that have like prequel sequels, you know, other series. Like I'm not mentioning, for instance, um, New Prince of Tennis on this list. I'm not mentioning any of the Knights of the Zodiac uh, spinoffs on this list or Saint Seiya spinoffs. But, because I had talked about this in my previous video, I thought I'd go ahead and mention it here anyway. That was number 28, by the way, on the list of the highest selling of all time. And number 21 is the next one, and that is Baki the Grappler. Now, Baki the Grappler, much like Kinikuman, is a multi-part series. It has been going for decades, it has multiple parts, and it has gained a lot of notoriety in recent years because the anime has been airing on Netflix. Uh, we already have, I believe, three or four different parts of the anime on Netflix. But in English, it's never been fully published or even close to fully published. Now, the original Baki the Grappler series, Grappler Baki, was published by Gatsune Entertainment and was part of the Raijin Comics magazine that I had mentioned earlier in this video. However, they published about 40 some odd chapters of the series, but it never got put into collected editions. So the only way that you can officially have Baki the Grappler in English is if you buy those old Raijin Comics magazines. And whereas they used to be really cheap, like you could buy an entire lot of like all 40 something issues for maybe as many dollars. Now, I think with the popularity rising of manga and people starting to realize that that's the only place where you can get some official releases of stuff, there's a lot more people that are seeking those out. Um, anyway, so Baki the Grappler uh, has a lot of different uh, series, a lot of different parts and stuff. That's what happened to the first one. The second part, just titled Baki, is also technically legally available in English, but only digitally from a uh, from a publisher called Media Do or Media Do. You can look up Media Do online and, and find their release of Baki, but that's the only official release. Now, there is an English release that comes out of Malaysia, however, it's not an official release. It's actually an illegal uh, printing, so if you buy that from Malaysia, if you buy those books and import them because they're, you can find them on like eBay and stuff, um, it, it's not one that actually supports the publishers and stuff, just to you know, let you know, but they do have like a dozen volumes or so of that available right now. All right, so we move along to number 17 on the highest selling manga of all time list, and this is another one that was published by uh, Tokyo Pop in English, and that is the Kindaichi Case Files. So Tokyo Pop published 17 total volumes in English, which I think is supposed to be the entirety of the first part of the series. However, the series is still ongoing in English at this time with over 80 volumes, and they only published those first, not even 20. Uh, it's basically a mystery series with kind of supernatural twists to it. Uh, I would say compared to like Case Closed or Detective Conan, as that series is known in Japan, um, where each case, you know, you, you see the main characters solve the case and find who the criminal is and all that stuff, but it's more mature than Detective Conan is, and it has, like I mentioned, often supernatural elements to it. But they only published those first 17 volumes in the US, unfortunately, and there's been no movement on this license since then. Uh, moving forward to number 11 on the highest selling of all time list is Oishinbo. Oishinbo is not only one of the highest selling, but it's also one of the highest selling food related manga of all time, um, as it is a series that has run for 111 volumes in Japan. Um, though it's been on an indefinite hiatus since 2014, um, it, it follows a food journalist uh, who is in search of putting together basically the ultimate menu. Now, the release in 
English is technically not discontinued because it was never intended to be a full release. Uh, instead, it's based on the Japanese a la carte editions, uh, and each of the seven volumes that we got in the US is basically a best of where they focus on a different type of food, uh, like, you know, Japanese pub food or rice related dishes. Uh, I think there's one for like various alcohols and stuff like that. And they provide various chapters that focus on that type of stuff and then, you know, compile that into a, you know, best of greatest hits type volume. Um, so there's only seven volumes available in Japan from Viz Media's editor choice line. However, I think it's notable to mention that it is based, like I mentioned, on the Japanese a la carte editions, and it doesn't even completely publish all of the a la carte volumes that were originally released in Japan. This one I understand, like, with such a long-running series, um, and one that, like, really they don't need to publish in its entirety, you can enjoy kind of snippets on their own. Um, I, I can understand why they would only do, like, releases like this, but I think it would be fun to A, see it put back into print, and B, maybe release more of those best of type volumes. Moving forward, number 10 on the list of the highest selling manga of all time is Crayon Shin-chan. Now you might be familiar with the name of Shin-chan if, like me, you watched the anime when it was airing on Adult Swim back in the late 2000s. I used to wake up, uh, I would record the episodes the night before, and then I'd wake up and watch them as I was like getting ready to go to school. And my sister, who's five years younger than me, was, you know, pretty young at the time and probably too young to be watching it, but she went ahead and watched it with me anyway, and we were both pretty amused. Uh, now, the manga started to be published in the US, and this one's gone through three different publishers. So the first publisher was Comics One, who released 10 paperbacks of the series. And then, after Comics One went under, it got picked up by CMX, who published 11 volumes of the series. Then, after CMX went under, years went by, and it then got picked up by One Piece Books. And One Piece Books started publishing three-in-one omnibus editions, and they made it through four, so they covered 12 total volumes, uh, coming one volume further than the previous publisher did, and then they stopped releasing them. So these releases made it almost to one quarter worth of the entire original release of Shin-chan, which was 50 volumes long. The series ended, though, in Japan after the untimely accidental death of the creator of the series, and since then, and before then, it did have a lot of spin-offs, but since then, um, former, I believe, assistants to the original creator took over and started up a new Shin-chan series. But we've still not had the entirety of the manga published in English, which is pretty unfortunate for fans of the title like myself. And that brings us around to the highest selling manga of all time, which was discontinued in English, and that is Golgo 13. Now, Golgo 13 is the second highest selling manga of all time, and as well currently has the second highest number of volumes. It is only behind One Piece in sales, and it is only behind Dokaben as far as the number of volumes. However, while Dokaben has been concluded for a while, uh, Golgo 13 technically is still ongoing, even past the uh, the passing of the creator Takao Saito. Uh, and it also, even if it didn't continue to go on after his death, it also still has 60 plus chapters of material that have not been collected. So once those are collected, it will be the number one highest number of volumes of all manga series of all time. Um, however, there's a pretty staggering difference between the sales of One Piece and this one, so I don't think it's going to catch up with that anytime soon. So there have been multiple different releases of Golgo 13 in English. I believe the earliest releases were a series of, I think, four different graphic novels by Lead Publishing starting in 1986. Then in 1989, Lead Publishing released these two issues, and these two were offered uh, by mail-away order, basically, if you were to purchase the Nintendo Entertainment System Golgo 13 games. And these stories were not related to the stories of the game, but these are what they decided to offer in relation to those games. After that, there was another series of issues which Lead Publishing put out in uh, conjunction with Viz Media uh, titled The Professional, and there are, I believe this is a three-issue series, and I have two of those three. Uh, and this adapts one of the other storylines from the long-running series. Now, years later, Viz Media again would publish more Golgo 13 in a 13-volume Best Of series. Um, that was part of their editor's choice line, which at this point now is very out of print and many of the volumes are pretty hard to find. But there's a lot of Golgo 13 uh, media out there basically for fans in English. And also uh, I didn't pull it out of my, my uh, drawers, but I do also have 
the Blu-ray release of the 52 episode anime series that is also available. So there's plenty of Golgo 13 out there for fans of the franchise, but we've never seen a full release. Now, honestly, to me, this does make sense. It is such a long running series with over 200 volumes. It makes sense to me that like, Publishers would be hesitant to try and publish the entirety of the franchise. However, with the recent passing of the series creator to Calcido just last year, I do think that right now would be an, a, a great time for a publisher to pick up the license and publish some sort of anthology with some of the greatest stories from the franchise's history. It would be a great way to allow fans to celebrate the creator and his life's work. And that brings us to the end of this list. There's a lot of stuff on this list that I didn't know about before I was doing the research for this video. And I have to say, like, even when I was getting close to making the video, I went through and found more information and more series that I would have accidentally left out. Um, so it was really fun to do this because I knew about things, you know, that are close to me, like Reborn Gintama and Initial D, and of course Golgo 13, but I didn't know about some of these other titles uh, that were only partially published in English, like Swan or Kindaichi Case Files. So now I'm going to pass it off to y'all. Which of these discontinued titles that I talked about in this video are the ones that you would like to see brought back and published in full? And what's something that was not one of the highest selling manga of all time that was discontinued that you're a fan of that you wish would get brought back? I know that there's a ton of those series out there that have a lot of fans, but they just didn't make it onto that top selling list. Stuff like Kurohime or Strawberry 100% or Beat the Vandal Buster, for instance. So I'm interested in hearing y'all's feedback and what you have to say about these things in the comments below. Uh, thank you so much for spending time with me. I really hope that this video was both entertaining and informative because that's always what I strive to provide with my content. If you're not yet subscribed to me, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so that you're notified of all the awesome content that I put out on a weekly basis. So again, thank you all for spending the time with me in this video. I hope you had fun because I had fun making it and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace out.